Hello, this is Harlan Mack with Vermont Studio Center, and welcome to the first Shop Talk with VSC. So today, I am very pleased to be welcoming four-time VSC alum Sock Song as our first featured artist. Um, Sock is a paper folding artist and is the creator of Creased, a magazine for paper folders, as well as the author of a number of paper folding books, including Origami Chic and Crease and Fold. Sock is an incredibly generous and hardworking artist, and we are so happy to have you with us and looking forward to learning from you a bit about paper folding. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks, Arlen. I, I'm so happy to be able to do this. I've been um, wanting to do more Zoom meetings, but I've been more joining origami meetings and teaching here and there. So, but I'm glad, I'm happy to be able to fold with all of you. So I think there's still, this looks like people are still joining in. Um, Basically, we're going to do some really simple, easy things. Um, you can, things that you can do with um, regular paper that you have at home. So as far as like preparation, um, I know that probably most of you have eight and a half by 11 printer paper handy. So if you grab some printer paper or any kind of rectangle, any kind of paper, I think some said, like Harlan said, he's using wrapping paper. You can use, um, we're gonna do some things with magazines. So if you have a magazine, an old magazine, you can use like paper from magazine. You can use a newspaper. Any kind of paper that you have handy available should be fine for all of these projects. The only thing that's uh, different from paper is the little mask uh, that's from paper towels. So I guess you can fold the rest of the things with paper towels as well. Um, but if you have like old magazines lying around or just regular printer paper that you've printed it on or not printed it on, uh, I'm going to teach basically on the basis that everyone probably has either like an old magazine or eight and a half by 11 paper. So, all right, so I'm gonna clear this space so that we can all see. We'll start with um, this simple and easy to make box. I think um, it's, it's very easy to do. And the, the model name is called a magazine cover box or a rectangle box. It's very useful, it's super easy. It's called magazine cover box because you're actually supposed to use the cover of a magazine like this, which is a little bit thicker paper. And um, it's actually so useful. I use these and make these all the time. Like they're in my kitchen drawers to organize like little takeaway condiments or like little paper clips or like little anything. Um, if they're open like this next to a drawer, they're good for organizing. You can even make them bigger to uh, make a gift box. And if you make two of them, they fit really nicely. And it's a really nice, it's fairly sturdy box considering this is a thin magazine. This is just folded from pages of a magazine. So I have a piece of a magazine here. This is actually a cover, a back cover, I think. And you can either just tear it and I have a, a raw edge here that's torn and that's, you can leave it like that. And, or you, if you want, you can go ahead and like cut the ends off if you want to make it nice and neat. But for this model, you'll need a rectangle paper, any kind of rectangle. Uh, normally origami would be done with like a square, right? But uh, there are fun things you can do with a rectangle uh, and it gives you a little extra little strip of paper that actually will become, if it was folded from a square, it wouldn't have this extra paper for a lock. So, all right. So I'm gonna clear this space so we can all see. And I think I'm going to use the magazine because the white, it washes out and you can't see the folds really well, but um, we'll use the magazine paper. So if at any time uh, you need help or if things are going too fast or anything, you can uh, chat, send a chat message and Harlan will look out for that and then uh, send a message or send a note if you need help. But you just need any kind of rectangle. And the first fold we'll do is uh, a book fold, which is you fold the paper in half like a book. And we'll first do that the long way. So the, the long sides together. See, I didn't cut off my ends here. 
but it's okay. It could be any kind of rectangle. We're folding to the two long edges together, like so. So when you do that, you actually create this little valley, right? And that's what this fold is actually called in origami. This is called a valley fold because it goes down into a valley. And there's only really two ways to fold paper, right? You can fold it like this, or you can also fold it this way. If you fold it like this, it's the normal uh, valley fold. If you fold it like this, this is called a mountain fold because it comes up into a mountain peak. So that's really the two basics of origami folding. And once you know valley fold and mountain fold, you can pretty much fold almost anything. It's easy to do. So we made that valley fold. That gives us a crease down the middle here. And now we're going to fold the two sides into the center crease. So I know it's hard to see that middle line because this is, but you, uh, that's, even, that's not so easy to see either. But let's go the sides into the center here to here. So that they both sides meet right into the center line that we just made. And this is called a cupboard fold. So origami has its own language. So if you know kind of the, the basics of like how to talk the, the language or the words, the jargon, you can kind of give vi verbal instructions. So we did a book fold in half and cupboard folds to the center. So that's cupboard folds or whenever you fold two sides to the center like cupboard doors. So that was a book cupboard. Now we've divided that into four quadrants, right? Four long rectangles. We're going to do another book fold, but this time we'll rotate the paper and fold it in half the short ends together, like so. So here to here. So before we had the long fold, I think sometimes the kids call this like the hot dog bun fold. But this, this way, I think the, the, the obverse, they say a hamburger fold, <laughs> but hot dog and hamburger. But they're both really book folds. Book fold long way, book fold the short way. And then using that as a reference, we're going to also do another cupboard fold, which is both sides to the center to create another rectangle. And now we've divided the paper. We're creating a grid. It's a four by four grid. So the cupboard folds to the center. This time we're gonna leave the cupboard folds in like so. So if we look at our cupboard folds that we just put in, we can still kind of see, or you can, if you can't see it with the paper, you can kind of feel all the creases of the divisions. We have one, two, three, four, and then the three lines that go through both sections here. So what we'll do is we're going to fold the four corners in, but only to the first crease that you have here from the, the long cupboard folds that you made. So um, we're going to fold the corner only to the first crease that you have here. Sorry, I'm realizing that it's hard to see with the magazine. So maybe if it doesn't wash out so much, I'm gonna just show what it looks like on the um, white paper. I did that a little bit reversed, but book, cupboard, book, cupboard, right? We did book, cupboard, and then we're here with you guys. So on here, you'll see that these are the lines that you have, right? These are actually mountain folds. And then on the top, you have this split in the paper. The crease that we're going to make is to that first line that you have. It doesn't go to the center where the paper is split, but just to the first line. And we'll do that with all four corners. It's like when you're like saving a page after you're reading, you, sometimes it's called dog earring. You just fold down a little triangle. So we'll do that on all four corners where we fold all the four corners down to just the first crease and it leaves this long strip in the middle here. Like so. And you wanna make these nice and sharp. As with origami, like the sharpness of the creases makes a big difference in the final model like that, okay? 
So we left that long strip for a reason. Um, if we had done this out of a square, we would actually wouldn't have this long strip. Um, that's why having a, a rectangle gives us an extra little piece of paper. Uh, and that becomes a lock. It's called a paper lock, which is going to help us to shape the box and let the box stay in its form. We'll grab this long strip on each side and we're going to fold it over the triangles here. Our purpose is to trap the triangles down. So this long strip that's here, we're going to fold that over and crease it so that the triangles don't pop up. And we're creating a little paper lock. And depending on the kind of paper you have, sometimes it'll tear here and that's okay. You can always fold it again or put a little piece of tape like so. We'll do that on both sides. So the, the main purpose is to trap the triangles so that the triangles don't pop out. And this long strip kind of locks the paper and it creates this kind of lantern shape, right? The back looks like this. And now we're done with all the folding. So basically, we're going to gently go in here and pull these sides up. And you see it's movable and it opens up like so. And it kind of wants to go back in on itself. So to make sure that it stays up and then that's form, you want to just create the shape of a box. And the best way to do that is reinforce the corners. So I'm gonna grab it here and grab the corner of the box of the rectangle and pinch once here and another one here and go around and pinch the walls and the corners of the box, pushing the sides in and sometimes it's going to kind of wobble like this and that's okay. Just push the sides in and pinch the edges until you can make this rectangular shape using all the creases that you uh, made, pre-creases. And if you can just build the walls like so. And then you have a nice sturdy magazine cover box. And you can do this with any rectangle shape. And you can experiment with all different sizes because like if you made really large boxes, it can be a really nice gift box. I don't know if this will, yeah, it looks like this will fit into here. If you make two, they kind of fit nicely together. And um, it's actually very sturdy. You can have them all side to side for organizational purposes. You can put your painting supplies in there or your screws in there. Um, and the, of course, the sturdier the paper, like the thicker the paper, the, the sturdier the box will be. Okay, so that's our magazine cover box. If we have time later, we'll fold another one just so that uh, together as a review, so that you can, we can uh, make a lid for it. So, but just for the time that we have, let's go ahead and continue with the next model. Okay, so we'll put that aside and then I'm gonna grab another rectangle piece of paper. Because I'm, I'm just, uh, some of you might have, and you can use origami paper if you have it, but I'm going on the assumption that everyone probably will have some sort of rectangular paper. Um, this is just printer paper. Um, and we're going to make a square out of this. And the best way to make a square out of rectangular piece of paper is actually to do a fold. And that's to just fold the triangle across. So if you have an eight and a half by 11, or if you're using a four paper, whatever rectangle it is, this is the best way to make a square because um, most origami is done using squares. So we're going to fold a square out of this like this. And I know some of the purists in origami say that you can't use scissors or glue or, but, to get to a square, I think it's okay to say that you can use scissors to cut away this strip. So to get that square, I'm gonna cut away this long rectangle strip. And we're not gonna throw that strip away. We're gonna keep it and use it for one of the folding projects. So we're gonna use both of these sheets of paper. So this one's once an eight and a half by 11, and now it's an eight and a half by eight and a half square. And then, you can kind of do the math of eight and a half minus 11 would be this dimension by eight, eight and a half as well, right? All right, so now we have square 
and we have origami paper. So you can kind of do origami with almost anything. I've done origami with magazines, newspapers, with plastic, with fabric, anything that you, is malleable that's foldable, you can pretty much use to fold uh, origami. So let's first use the rectangle strip. We'll save the square for the next project. So grab this rectangle, this long rectangle, and um, normally I will actually use a, a smaller proportion rectangle, uh, meaning probably around half. So you can fold this in half. So if you have um, eight and a half, this long strip that you cut from the, but if you're using origami paper, um, you can also just use a regular origami paper and fold it in half. So for those of you who are using origami paper, just fold your origami paper in half. For those of you who are using the strip with me, we're going to fold the strip in half. So this is probably the proportion that I want. Like, like so, a little bit um, longer than it's, it's taller than it's wide. Okay. And again, any kind of, I guess, rectangle works for this too. Um, you want it to, to be a little bit taller like this, this kind of, I think these proportions work really well. So if you started with the square, like if you had regular origami paper, just go ahead and fold it in half. And you can cut it in half, but I think actually having two layers of paper works best with this. So I have these two things, but you only need one. Sorry, I want to be clear that you just need this. So from here, from the rectangle strip, um, we're going to pretend that we're going to make a square out of this too, by just folding a triangle over like that. And on the other, or if you're using origami paper, you'll fold the triangle over like that. So you're making uh, triangles like this. We'll unfold that. That's a pre-crease, right? So now we see this diagonal that we just made. We're going to fold in the other direction. We're not flipping the paper over. We're folding in the other direction. So we make those two diagonals cross each other to make an X in the paper. So here, I'll do that again. We did it this way, we unfolded, and we did it this way, like so. So it's once this direction on the same side, once in the other direction. So we wanna make an X in the paper. Once we have that X, right, we're going to turn it over to the other side. On this side, it's valley folds, right? And on the other side, it's mountain folds. So we can actually see the X better. It's easier to see the X on the mountain side. So on the mountain side, you can clearly see my X here. We're going to fold just the X in half, meaning we'll fold the top two corners of the X down to the bottom two corners of the X. We're not folding the whole thing down in half. We're folding only the X. So I can draw, we have the X here. And what we're doing is we're gonna fold the top two corners down to the bottom two corners of the X. In essence, we're folding a valley fold across to the middle of the X. So we're dividing the X in half. So here, top two corners down to the bottom two corners of the X. And it looks like this, it looks like a little rectangle strip. And you see that my fold went right through the middle of that X I just created. So here to here. Okay, so we made a valley fold here and we have mountain folds here. Now we're going to turn it over to the other side, back to where we had it, like this. And on the table, if you, you see now three lines intersect, right? The two diagonals intersected and then now you just put the, the fold right through the middle of the X. If you push right where the center is, where they intersect, the paper should pop up like that. So you're on this side. I know it's hard to see, it kind of washes out with the white. So I'll show you on this, so it pops up like that. So you were like this, and then if you push the center, it should pop up like that. So if you pinch the sides a little bit and hold this side down and bring the top 
down, it should collapse almost like a little umbrella, like a pop-up umbrella like this. They just close right in and you'll get this little triangle like so with these little two little triangles sticking out. So this is one of the um, basics of origami is to, to do like a, it's called a water bomb base. And it's basically doing two diagonals and one horizontal to collapse it into this shape. So if you're having trouble with that part, basically you just have to make sure that these two diagonals are in this direction and then the horizontal breaking the X is in the other direction. And then you can kind of, if, if maybe some of the folds are in the wrong way, just pinch this side and then push it down so that you have almost like an arrow, right? A little triangle on top of a rectangle piece like that. All right, so to continue, we're going to grab these little triangle points that are loose here, and we're going to fold them almost like we're going to the top. That would be like normal, like when you're doing origami, you want to have easy landmarks going from point to point. But for our purposes here, we're going to not go all the way to the top, but a little bit out to the side. So it pivots from the center where it can't pivot anymore, and we're going to pivot, and almost like we're going to the top, but we're gonna go out to the side so it sticks out like that. So make it stick out a little triangle tip that goes like that. And the same thing on the other side, we will make it symmetrical or try to make it symmetrical. It almost looks like a little tulip shape, right? So these two little points are going up and out so that they stick up. So here's the one with the white one here like this. So it looks like either a tulip or like a little crown. So it sticks out. And you know, the angles don't really matter as long as you make it little, stick out a little bit. So it looks like a little crown or a little tulip or like a fork shape, like so. All right, so that part. Now, if we look at the sides, we have two parallel sides here on the sides. We're going to fold those two sides to the center. And we'll see that it, we have these parts to contend with when we're trying to go to the center here. So, but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of lift this out of the way. We don't have to fold it all the way, but just try to go as close to the center as possible. This is a fold we've done before where we bring, we're bringing two sides into the center like cupboard folds. So we're folding the two sides to the center as close See, mine has a gap, that's okay. But just try to go as close to the center as possible. So we had the long rectangle uh, on the bottom, and we're gonna fold that to the center. I think with the origami paper, half one by two proportion, we have a longer strip going down than the uh, eight and a half by 11 strip that we made. So now we have something like a fork, right? three prongs here on top in this long like rectangular strip. So from here, so far we've made very crisp, like really nice sharp folds. And they're all different types of folds in origami. There's crisp folds and then the next two folds, the last two folds we'll do will be more of like a soft curvy fold because we are actually gonna use these folds for uh, an action that's going to happen when you fold them. So when you fold a piece of paper, um, what happens is you are actually breaking the fibers. And once you break the fibers of the paper by folding it, um, that will stay that way. And it's, uh, it's not easy or almost impossible to un unfold it, even if you iron it once you break the fibers. So the purpose of these next two folds is to create like a spring or a bounce. So we wanna fold them softly, not as hard as we've been folding them. So we'll grab the bottom part, which is this flat part, and bring it up to the top most point. So it's, it's basically folding in half. So here to here. And you see, I didn't push that down. It keeps it a, a little bit of a curve like that. So if I let it go, it actually unfolds itself. I don't wanna actually press it too hard. So same thing, you're going to bring the bottom all the way up to the top like this. 
And the last fold will be to bring the top ed now to down to the bottom. And this is also very soft. I'm just gonna curve the paper. So I'm creating a little bit of like a S curve, right? So, but I'm not, you see, I'm not pressing them closed or a very firm fold. We're keeping them a little bit loose like that. So if you keep it and the looser that it is, when you put it on the table and use your finger and you're not gonna press down here, you're just gonna kind of slide your finger off like you're sliding off of a button like this. If you slide your finger off like that, it should jump. So using that spring of the paper, if you just push here and then just slide your finger off the back like that, it should jump. Here. Now, this is great with index cards or like uh, business cards. Um, and then you can try to, while we prepare for the next one, you can try to make your frog jump into the box that you made. So, ah, first shot, second shot. <laughs> so, um, the more, uh, the stiffer or, or harder the cardstock paper it is, the, the more it will jump and the softer you make this. And let's say you accidentally pressed it flat, that's okay too. Because even if I did press this flat, it still will do some jumps and a few flips, and it's still okay. Um, one of those little secrets when I was at the Vermont Studio Center with the kids in Arista's class, some of the kids really folded this really too hard. So I'll, I'll share a little secret with you where we made super jumping frogs. And um, if, if you, like, if it gets tired and it won't jump anymore as far, and I think some of the kids might remember, if you grab another piece of paper, maybe something more of like a stiffer or cardboard paper. I think we, in the class we used um, index cards. Um, you can kind of give it like robotic inserts. That's what we call them. So this is just a regular piece of paper and I just put it inside the rectangular part. And if we, it kind of refreshes the folds and it makes the, the bouncy part stiffer. So I put this little insert in here and it just folds back the way it was. And if you put the spring back in, you'll see, I'll, I'll start it from here. It's gonna go, whew, it went right to my <laughs> computer there. It makes it a robotic, oh, it went off the table now. <laughs> so you can refresh it with just a little piece of paper that you stick into this part. This was like one of the little postcards you get in a magazine. It makes it jump a little bit more because it makes the, the spring thicker paper. Okay, so now we'll get that into the box and we'll work with the square paper now. So you have your square that you made uh, from the uh, printer paper, or some of you might still be using origami paper. This you can you can still uh, this one I got on Amazon, so you can still or order origami paper uh, if you need to. Um, but I tend to like whenever I don't have paper, um, I tend to just use whatever I have on hand, and there's always printer paper or recycled paper or a magazine around. So. All right, so from this square that we have, we um, already have this valley fold in, and that's good, because that's going to actually be our first fold. So go ahead and put that valley fold in, and this is a long diagonal fold, right? So it's dividing the square into a triangle. So it's just a regular triangle here. So if you're doing origami paper, um, most origami paper has, um, traditional origami paper comes in like bright colors on one side and white uh, uh, plain on the other side. This happens to be a print and a, a solid color on the other side. Um, and in origami, it's important which side you start on because um, if we're using white paper and they're the same on both sides, it doesn't really matter. So one of the first things when you're teaching origami in the classes, you usually say white side up or color side up or print side up. So in our case here, we're going to do, um, here would be white side up or solid side up. 
and then we're going to fold into a triangle so that we get um, a print triangle or this would be a different color. If you wanted to decorate this side, you can. You could also print uh, cool patterns and make it into origami paper as well. Um, all right, so from here, we have uh, the triangle that you have. And you just need to do one. I'm just showing both so that you don't, um, this doesn't get washed out. And for the people who are using origami paper, they can look at this. If you're using printer paper, you can use that. So we have the long side of the triangle here and the two short sides come to a right angle. We're gonna grab one of the short sides and we're going to fold it down and line it up with a long, long side of the triangle. And sometimes this is a, a difficult fold to do because it's hard to know where to line this up. What I like to do is I line up this corner tip first. So because if that corner tip is lined up and that's the easiest to line up first, I kind of pinch that. And then once that's pinched, then I can line up the rest because I don't want it to go past and I don't want to be too in. So I, I can line it up. Once I pinch this corner, I can go ahead and go down and across and make that long fold like so. So again, with this paper, I will do a corner like this and then I will line it up the best way I can and go all the way across like that. So it's almost like you're doing a paper airplane. And um, what we, origami tends to be symmetrical. So whatever you do on one side will repeat on the other side. So we'll turn it over and we'll fold the other side down. Very much like an origami plane or like a jet plane, like so. So we have um, this shape. If we, you don't need to do this, but I'm just gonna show you. This is one of the traditional bases in origami. It's called a kite base because it looks like a kite. And this is a, a, a base that can turn into lots of things. So it can turn into a flower, it can turn into a boat, a swan, a bird, or all different things. So we folded this down here on both sides. Now we're going to go up with that edge. Remember the edge that we came down with? We're gonna go up with that edge and we're again gonna bisect this part. We bisected this angle in half and now we're gonna bisect it again thinner. And again, this becomes very thin here, but again, it's important to make a nice point here first and then do the rest. So here to here. The same thing on the other side, here to here. So we'll do that on this one too, so we can see. All right. So we have like really, really sharp point here with this little uh, flared edges like so. Kind of a zigzag you're creating. We're gonna open this up, but we're opening it up just gently on the middle. We're not opening all the folds. We're just gonna open up just the middle so that we can see the kite. So we were here and we just opened it up so we can see the kite. Just a solid kite, not on this side with where all the, the pleats are. We're gonna open it up to the plain kite side. So everyone has this plain kite, right? Now we're gonna grab all the layers of the sides along the side of the kite and fold it right to the middle. Again, it's folding and bisecting this angle. Now you have a line to go to here too. So you can line it up as best as you can. So one at a time, so here to here. Again, here to here, both sides. So it kind of narrows that kite. It almost looks now like a little feather, like a peacock feather here. You're, it's, a, it's a form of pleating, right? Fan pleating, but diagonally to create this little fan pleat like that. Almost like the peacock tail. So it looks like that. So from here, we'll fold the sharp corner all the way to the other side. So we're folding it in half. So we're gonna grab the, the sharp corner part and go all the way to the other side. Make sure you're on the side that it has the pleats on top. If you have just a plain one here, that's the, the wrong side. We want it to be on the side that has the pleats like this, the little color change if you're using origami paper. 
if you're using one solid sheet, you, this pleat like this. So we're gonna fold it in half like that, all the way to the other side. And it kind of bounces back on you, almost like another spring, paper spring pop-up, right? So after that, we're, after we brought this all the way to the other side, we're now going to bring it back on itself. We're not gonna go all the way to the bottom because that's too far, but we're gonna go about a third. And I think like my, if you just kind of gauge where you're going backwards, this part is about equal to this part, about a third. In origami, that's called a rat fold. It's called rat fold because R-A-T, right about there, rat fold. So we say it's a rat fold or it's a judgment fold. You judge for yourself what kind of fold it is. And there's no right or wrong. If you wanted to go all the way there, that's okay. If you want to be really small, that's okay. But it's right about there. It's a rat fold. So now we have this kind of like a zigzag type of shape like that. So to finish this, we're almost done with all the folding. We're going to grab all the layers so that we're going to hold them like this. And we're going to mountain fold, meaning folding down. Well, you're going to hold all the layers together and mountain fold down right down the middle along the existing crease. We don't want to fold it in because that traps everything and we don't see anything. We want to fold it down so that we have all the parts visible like so in half. Same thing with this. If you fold it in half, you can st still see all the, uh, the zigzag layers like that. So to, to do the final shaping, um, there's the zigzag layer part here, and then there's the bottom part here. I'm going to pinch the bottom part here. This is the top. If we're saying this is the top part, this is the bottom part. I'm going to hold the bottom part with one hand like this and grab this part here that's like the, the neck of it, and it's movable, it's flexible, right? It's like a joint of your elbow, but um, it kind of goes back if you let it go. So we wanna make it stay, so we're gonna pull it up, and right in the base here, we're going to pinch so it will stay. So we're forcing a new fold by pinching here in the front. So we'll pull it up like a little joint, and then like, pinch it right there. Same thing with the, the head here. We're going to pull it up and then right at the base, we're going to pinch so that, that it will stay. So here and here, we're pinching so that it stays and it will, when you put it down, it should stand on its own and you have your finished origami swan. So here, same thing with the origami paper, up and pinch. And you can kind of spread the base open if you want, and it should stand on its own and you have your finished origami swan here. And this is actually like, I do a lot of different size folding, like from really tiny to like 16 foot paper. This actually holds really well with larger paper, the way that the layers are distributed. Uh, and in the classes I taught in Arista's uh, art classes, we had all the kids kind of had the swans kind of fight. If you hold it on the table, they kind of have a little bit of an action. I don't think swans actually do this maneuver, this kind of move, but the kids really like that it kind of had like a pecking action. If you push, if you hold it on the top here and then push it on the table, they kind of move like so. Okay. Um, how are we doing on time, Harlan? I realize I don't have a clock on my... It looks like we still are oh, at 541. Okay. All right. So um, we'll do the box again after I do this uh, mask. Where is it here? I have two kinds of masks in this time of quarantining. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, sewing with fabrics to send masks and like protective gear to my sister-in-law who's a nurse. And I know that I've also been like, originally she actually um, sent me a message saying, can you make like a tutorial video on how to make a paper version of a mask or a paper version of a hat? Uh, so that the nurses can keep their hair out of their um, faces and also like not to use in the emergency room per se, but just to put something over their N95 masks. Because in the beginning, 
she was only getting one N95 mask for a whole entire week that she had to use. So it was, it was better for her to like put something over or to protective uh, in addition. So I started making things out of uh, fabric because I had access to a sewing machine and fabric. And then I decided to play around with different types of making things out of paper towels or something easy or accessible or disposable. Um, so for this, if you have just a regular paper towels, uh, I think some of them are like the, the terrible, like the sizable ones like this. You can have either one rectangle that way. If you can do two, that's like a better size for the one that the one of the ones that I'm doing. And then the other one is just a, a rectangle like this. So I think we'll start with the two together. So if you grab some paper towels um, to make the, that's this one, I think I'll show if you can see on my screen rather than overhead. Um, it's these are rubber bands here. Just I just had a whole ball of rubber bands of different colors. And then um, this is this size. I mean, I can turn this like this so you can see that. This is this size, right? And then it's just basically these rubber bands and a paper towel and some tape. So those are the supplies you need for the mask. So paper towels, rubber bands, or any kind of tie and some tape. Let's see, let's clear the space. So this is the version one of using two, using two together. So if you, it's almost like a square, right? It's a little bit, um, if you don't, uh, it's, it's a little bit wider. It's more of a rectangle. So it's two panels rather than one panel. I'm just gonna, I have converted my little sewing table into an origami desk here. So it's a, you don't wanna see that side of the table at all. <laughs> Um, okay, so it's very simple. Um, the basics of it is like a, an origami boat. If you've ever made an origami boat out of a rectangle, um, it's basically trying to create this kind of curvature of, that can go around the face um, and to create the pocket so that it uh, like a, a three-dimensional shape. And um, so we'll start with this if everyone's ready. And you, if you have two together, you'll basically have uh, to be able to fold it in half, right? So we're here and we folded the paper towel in half. So we have two layers now. Um, from here, so that was like, if we review some of the terms, the valley fold or a book fold, when we already have the fold, that's the, the perforated part here, right? And from here, we have two, uh, two different edges here. We have a folded edge, right? And hold on, I think this went better that way. Okay. So we have um, the folded edge, the folded edges here, and then we have two raw edges. So those are our two different sides, right? Folded edge, one edge, two raw edges, right? On the folded edge, we're going to fold the corners down one at a time. And we don't go all the way to the bottom and we don't go all the way to the center. We don't have a center line here at all. Again, there's no real wrong way to do this. We just wanna fold the triangle down so that we leave a little bit of a rectangle here. And that's the same concept as the rectangle lock here that we need a little strip to help with the lock. I mean, we're going to use tape to reinforce it because if we didn't use tape or it would kind of fall apart on you, on your face, especially when you're stretching the rubber band. So we'll make the other side symmetrical like that. So it's almost like you're folding a, a paper airplane, right? So we're going like this. So here to here. Remember this is the folded edge so that we have these raw edges here, right? So we have that long strip now, and it's that same concept we learned with the box, paper locking. We're going to lock the triangles with this long strip like this. Fold up one layer like so, 
So it's like making a paper hat. If you made this with a newspaper, sometimes you might remember you made a hat out of a newspaper like that. And for our purposes here, because we're gonna use this for practical uses, I will just go ahead and get a piece of tape and tape this part. I know you're not supposed to use tape or glue, but it's, it's, it's difficult times now. We're in quarantine and sequestering and we need to use all available materials. So we don't have to be such a traditionalist. So the reason why I put tape here is because when the mask is on your face, this will pull apart and it might, I mean, on this one, I didn't do it, but it's good to go ahead and tape just this part right where the triangles meet and the edges meet there. We'll turn the paper over like this. So this was the front and we'll turn it over and we have the other rectangle strip that goes up like so. So if you have ever made like a paper hat, this would be like a hat that you would put on, right? Out of newspaper, this can be a, a hat, but we're gonna use this as a mask instead. So we folded this up like that, right? And then you can see this is the pocket that will become the mask. So just because, I mean, originally I made it without this fold and you can do it without it, but um, then you kind of get a mask that's like more like a beak. Like it's like an animal beak. It's more like a coffee cone. <laughs> so for some reason, I decided to fold this part down. It made it more into like, it looks more masky. So what I did was I folded the top corner down to the bottom and I don't go all the way to the bottom. I leave a little bit of space between the bottom here and here. So we were here to here. It kind of creates like a boat shape. And I actually tuck that underneath the little rectangle flap like that. So there was the rectangle flap. I just fold that in here. And this is where I would add another piece of tape. I did try doing this without adding tape and it held together for a little bit. But when you add that piece of tape here, it actually uh, will last a little bit longer. So that kind of makes it more stable. So it's, it's, this is the opening part like that. So that actually becomes the mask part. And then now this is the, the sides. This is where we're going to add the rubber bands. So I have all different types of rubber bands. Or if you have string, you can kind of, um, hold on, let's see. If I have any kind of string or tie can go here or elastic. And to do the, the elastic part, we're going to grab a rubber band and put it on the end here and just fold it over. Meaning, so just get the, so this, these are the sides, right? So one of the sides, I'm gonna put a rubber band on top and then I'm gonna fold this little corner over. And you can reinforce it if you want, if you wanna roll the rubber band in, so you can roll and then fold and roll again to reinforce it, that's okay too. And this is where you would put a little bit of tape as well. Uh, I've also seen people use a stapler they can staple it, but I would prefer not having sharp metal staples in my face possible. So that's where I put a little piece of tape. And then on the other side too, I put the rubber band over the end and I roll it over. And then another little piece of tape, like so. And then you're done. So you have your two ends like this, and then you can put it over, and this goes over your ears. And you have a paper towel, really quick disposable mask. You can reuse the rubber bands and just use different paper towels. Um, one thing that I've been doing on the mask is I've been putting little wires in the nose to be able to shape. So if you have a twist tie, this is just like an optional thing. This is just like a regular twist tie that comes with your trash bags or anything like that. And it's actually just a piece of metal, right? Um, it's just, I just put a little tape on here and you can put it on the inside. And if you tape it, it actually creates a, a shape, right? So you can tape it down and it will form to your face to kind of cover up your nose and kind of create the seal that you need to do. I'm sorry, it's the wrong camera, right? <laughs> so you create a seal here. And then this should, I think from what I've been seeing is that it should cover your nose and cover it up to your chin. 
So, and this, uh, you can always, like once you're done, you can throw the paper towel away and then we use the rubber bands if you need to. Okay. So this other version, which like was interesting because I, like I said, I've been sewing a lot of masks and the type of masks that I've been sewing have been like the pleated ones where um, there, I put in three pleats. I think some people used um, two pleats. Uh, and then just recently to make it easier, I've been using two pleats like this, where it's just, it's, it, it's interesting to me how everything is like, it's, it's using origami because you have to use pleats and folds. So the, this one will use just one strip. If you want it to be stronger, you can use two together. The concept of this one is pretty much the same too. If you want to use two together or just one, I'll show it with just one, one strip. And this is very simple as well. That you're just going to uh, one rectangle strip. We're going to fold in half. So we're just gonna fold it long ways. And then we're going to keep that fold in and fold the sides down. So it's like creating a fan pleat basically, like so. So we're just creating pleats like that. So it was half and then these down. So then when we open it up, we're gonna open it up like so. And this side is the one that has the, the opens like, it, so we could have also done cupboard folds like this, right? So let's turn it over to the other side. And we're going to fold the folded edge to the center here. And when we do that, actually the bottom parts will flip out. So here, so folded edge to the center line, allowing the bottom part to flip out like that. Again, I'll show you can kind of, you can do all of it and then just pull out the back part like that too, if that's easier. Okay, so we'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'll show you what it looks like on this side and I'll show you, it's basically, we just created a pleat, right? On this, just the middle center pleat. Like so. And on the ends here, we're gonna do the same thing with the, the rubber bands. But before we do that, I just pull, put, fold in a little triangle on, on each corner here like that. So here, you can also fold this in, but I just fold in a little triangle like this. I don't know if you can see. So here to here. And that just makes it easier for me to put the rubber band and fold this over and um, go ahead and add a little piece of tape. This one only takes two pieces of tape. So if you're short on scotch tape, this one's an easier, faster model. So one on this side, like so. And the same thing on the other side, we just fold the little corners in, little triangle corners. It kind of makes this end a nice little uh, part for the, the rubber band to go into and then fold that over and then another piece of tape. So, I mean, depends on what kind of tape that you have. The paper towels tend to be like very like easy. The, paper, the tape sticks really well to it. Um, and the funny thing is I thought when I was folding this, especially when I was doing it with two layers, I was like, what if I sew it? So if you have access to a sewing machine, I actually did two top stitches and it's super sturdy, like it won't rip. It's like as strong as fabric when I did two layers and this is just sewn. I just sewed it really quickly, top stitching and it made it a really super nice mask. Like um, this one with just one layer, you can still put it on and you pull the top and bottom to kind of make the mask, sorry. So after you put it on, you pull the top and bottom and it's a kind of cool mask. This is just one layer. This is the two layers I did with um, sewing the ends. And then I put the little twist tie here so I can shape the face. 
it's very like I've been sewing a lot of these and I, I kind of like the comfort of this soft paper towel on my face more than this cotton, surprisingly. So I guess this is more utilitarian. You can wash it and it's reusable and this is um, disposable. So, but this is something really easy to do if you have any kind of ties or any kind of um, paper towels. And it's actually pretty, I mean, depending on the type of paper towel, this is Bounty. So it's super strong. And I think it's not going to like, I mean, I, you can look at the percentages of what is really good protection like versus an N95. It's not a, as protective as an N95, of course. And even a fabric mask. Uh, but this does at least kind of um, prevent you from touching your face. And it kind of collects some of like, if you if there's any kind of germs it'll collect some of it i don't know how much it will and i know sometimes people will like double up they'll do a paper towel on top of the fabric mask or whatnot so you can kind of play with all different things and figure it out because i think also being in new york i see like if i'm going back and forth from work i i do see lots of people and some people are just wearing like a t-shirt over their face or some people just have a tissue over their face anything to cover their face to kind of protect themselves and other people. So, okay. Um, 558, it's an hour. So we didn't have time to go over the box again, but if you wanted to redo the box, uh, you can um, check online, There's, uh, or you can send me an email and um, I can send you the, the diagram uh, fairly easily. But if you just remember the basics of book covered, covered the long way, book covered, covered the short way, and then the, the four corners and the long strip. And you can kind of unfold the one that you already have and make a lid for it or make multiple ones. Oh, thank you so much. That was fantastic. Yay. Awesome, thank you.